not perfect. It happens. Okay. Um, managing videos and creating an interactive ensemble quiz, embedding in ensemble quizzes in Moodle, and assessing students and tracking progress in Moodle and ensemble. All right. So last I checked, um, all of you had logged into Ensemble. Um, let's see. And I think everybody is in. So if you all can start, uh, let, me, let me just start by telling you what Ensemble is for those of you who are not familiar. Ensemble is our video um, repository. Um, and so it used to house, um, videos that were basically copyrighted um, and we got busted <laughs> for housing copyright material um, which was to the dismay of everyone because it was super fun. Um, so now what it's used for mostly is housing content that either you as instructors or staff create or um, material that your students create and it's a very useful tool uh, because it just it can house all of this content. Um, it's particularly helpful because Moodle cannot hold that load. Um, and so it, it has the ability to both house it and link it to Moodle. Um, but it also has some other really cool features um, that I'm going to show you, such as the quiz and um, creating playlists and some of the other tools to get some of that material into Ensemble to easily link that. Um, and share that with your students. So um, if everyone can start by, let's see, where do I want to start? All right, so the first thing I'm going to start with is the Ensemble Chrome Video Recorder plugin. Um, so to get that, everybody needs to open up Chrome. And I'm just assuming that everybody has Chrome. Um, and you're gonna to navigate to H, uh, hold on, eh, give me my browser, stop it. You're gonna to navigate to the Chrome video store. Um, so you can just type in Chrome uh, web store, chrome.google.com, yes. Do we need to always use Chrome for Ensemble? Yes. Or just, well, in this just for if you're using the Ensemble um, recorder plugin. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to use it if you're using Ensemble in general, but if you're going to use this recorder plugin, then yes. It is, it is a plugin for the Chrome browser. Okay. So once you get to the Chrome store, you're gonna just type in Ensemble. And it is this first one. And I've already got it installed, so you're gonna click on it. And you should be able to just Click on it and follow the instructions to download it and add it to your browser. And then once it's added, you're going to see it up here. And let me see if I can log out so I can show you those steps. Maybe. Okay, um, anybody can stop me if uh, I'm going too fast. But once you've got it in your browser, um, you are gonna have to configure it. So if it hasn't already asked you to configure it, you're gonna put in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash video dot center dot edu. And then it's going to ask you for your login, and that's your center login. And the identity provider is center. And then I think it might ask you another question about enabling your webcam. And 
microphone. Thanks, Candace. I totally missed the chat. <laughs> That's a lot to keep up with, with one screen. Well, Kristen's the one that put it in there because I'm actually trying to uh, kind of document and put some of it on our link. Can you repeat what the URL was again, Kristen? Is it the video? Just yep. the video? Okay. Yep. HTTPS. I'll put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kristen put it in the thing. Yeah. But... Dot center dot edu. So for any of your colleagues that might have missed it, the links will be on our website. Um, so just wanted to let you guys know that. I'm not sure if anyone else is having this problem, but I can't give it access to my camera and I'm assuming it's because I'm using my camera in Zoom right now. That may be the case and that's okay because okay. we're not going to use the camera okay. feature. Um, and that's, that's a caveat that I'm going to um, share with you is this recording tool is a little limited um, in that it will only allow you to do a uh, screencast with your microphone or a webcast without the screen share. So it will not allow you to do both. Um, so it's a little limited, um, but it's great for students to do screencasts or for you to just do like a walkthrough of something with a voiceover. Um, it just, it doesn't do both. Um, so it is limited, but it's a really neat tool to just kind of walk through some basic stuff. So we're just going to walk through the, the screen sharing element of that. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Everybody there? Everybody good? Okay. So once it's in your browser, um, and you pull it up and you're going to see this screen right here. So like I said, the webcam option or the desktop option. Now I have made all of your um, default libraries in Ensemble the Tech Tuesday library. I had to do that as the administrator because this is going to automatically upload to your default library. So as administrators, we can change that. You can't change your default library, unfortunately, but you, we can set settings on the back end for you all to be able to copy to and from different libraries. So if you wanted to use this on a regular basis, we could create a personal library for you and then you, we could set it up so you could copy um, or transfer from your personal library to a course library or something like that. If that's something that you would like to utilize in the future. Okay. Um, so then, let me see if it'll let me do this. I'm not sure this is going to be odd doing a screencast within a screencast within a screencast, but um, basically I hit start record and it's doing a little countdown here. And then it's going to ask me whether I want to do the entire screen or an application window. So let me just do an application window. And now I'm recording. So it's doing my voice theoretically. I'm not really sure if it's actually picking up my voice because my voice is going through Zoom. Um, I'm assuming you can still hear me through Zoom. <laughs> okay, so I'm recording. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm scrolling and going through something super fun, awesome. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit stop. Now it's gonna automatically record. And now I'm recording. So it's doing my voice theoretically. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure if it's actually picking up my voice because my voice is going through Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming mm -hmm. you can still hear mm -hmm. me through Zoom. <laughs> okay, so I'm recording. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, okay, that's enough of that. Um, okay, so it worked. And then it gives you this default, what you've done here. So from here, you can download it, you can delete it, or you can hit upload. And like I said, it's gonna upload it to that default library. So I'm gonna hit upload and it's gonna convert it. And similar to how you've done some recordings with Zoom, it's gonna take a little bit depending on how long the video is. And then it's gonna upload to that default library. So now it's uploading. 
And once it's uploaded, it's going to go to the Tech Tuesday library that I have to navigate to. Actually, no, it's not because my default library, my default library is different than yours. I forgot to set mine. So mine went to my default library, which is just my own personal one, uh, which is right here. So what I want each of you all to do is to practice, if you've got it installed, is just to create a short little video, little screencast um, and upload it to the Tech Tuesday library because we're gonna use that in a moment. So just take a moment. Um, it can be like 30 seconds or less. Um, do a little recording and upload it to the Hey, Christy, can I add something to the group? Mm -hmm. So if you guys are on a Mac, um, I'm on my Mac laptop and you're gonna get something that you might've gotten before if you've used Teams about setting your settings, your privacy settings. So you might have to do some tweaking with that to so just more FYI, but it should prompt you, but just yeah, more if uh, you guys are on a Mac, you might run into that issue. Okay, thanks Candace. And then, and then, I, Aaron, I don't know if you've got it working or not, if that worked or if you're still having issues. What's, what's the issue with Aaron? She was having problems with the settings and permissions. Mm -hmm. So I told her to log into Ensemble first because I had logged into Ensemble first. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to the extension, it had me log. It, I was already logged in. So. Okay. Yeah, so mine's, mine's stuck on it's doing a circle. Moving circle, step two and three. Okay, that was an issue we had before. Do you have the latest version of Chrome? Is Chrome up to date? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe. Okay, we, we did have some issues um, and then we had to upgrade Ensemble um, and that was supposed to fix it, but you do have to have the latest version of Chrome. Um, so okay. we can address that later if that's not. Um, yeah, I'll just call um, Genevieve, um, the if you if you added it, um, it should be a little icon up in your um, up at the top. Um, if you don't see it, then you can go to more tools and extensions and make sure that it's added as a that it's enabled. button is not available. Okay. It's not perfect, but all right, let me see how many we've got in here. Are y'all having fun yet? Uh, Tech issues and all. <laughs> There's always tech issues, right? Yeah, this is real life. Usually yeah. you're on these webinars and everything runs like perfectly in the minute you step away. Yep. <laughs> so I well, that, it. Yeah, I wanted you all to, to experience it, you know? All 
All right, I'm going to give you all one more minute. And if you can't, if you can't record one right now for tech reasons, or you're just having trouble, or you don't want to, or whatever, that's fine. We're going to move on. We can use what's here. I think we've got plenty to work with. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Okay, so um, for those of you that that worked, um, does anybody wanna say how you feel about it? <laughs> Was it fairly easy? Was it frustrating? Where, can you see it being applicable? I thought it was pretty easy. And like, I, I used my PowerPoint to do it so I could see that I could do that as a way to do a PowerPoint, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you could easily have students do this to do, uh, you know, a, a presentation. Um, there are no editing tools um, within this, um, but it's just kind of like if you just wanted them to do a quick presentation and just upload it, it's there. Nice. So pretty cool. Okay. And then it goes to this default library and then you're there. All right. So then, um, just so that you all understand what the whole library situation is. I know I kind of talked about it a little bit, but like I said, on the back end, I made the Tech Tuesday Ensemble your default library. For some of you who have been using Ensemble, you have course libraries. So the default organization that each of you all are in is the Center for Teaching and Learning organization. And then this drop down menu right here is, you all don't see all of these, um, I do because I'm the admin, but this is where you would see all of the libraries that you have access to. Whether you are just able to view things or you are a contributor, which means you can add and edit and delete and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's where we set the permissions on the back end. So for some of you like um, Jen, you have several um, for your drama courses um, and you may have an individual one. And so when you click this, you're gonna see four or five listed here. Some of you may only have the Tech Tuesday. Um, and if you log into Ensemble, where you're gonna land is the default media library, most likely, which is here. And so you're gonna see, that's not supposed to be there, but you're probably gonna log, uh, when you log in, you're gonna, land here because this is your default landing page and then you navigate to the library that you want to go to um, and then from here you can manually add videos that you have created so if you created something in zoom you can click add and then you can go through the process of adding a video that way um, not to the media library um, but to your own library um, and you go through give it a name and let me go through here to the Tech Tuesday. So if I wanted to manually add one, go in here and just say test upload, and then continue. The default is to compress and stream. Um, if you've done a recording through Zoom, it's already an MP4 file, so you wanna change this so that it doesn't compress it even further uh, to no transcode and then you click add files or just drag that mp4 file here and then hit start upload and then continue um, so let me see if i can find something to upload um, moodle gradebook specifics wonderful and hit start upload so it's going to upload that and then once it finishes it's going to come down here you'll see it down here that's gonna take a while. That's taking way too long. It'll be down here and then you'll hit continue and then you'll have an opportunity to publish it. So when you publish, you have options to publish it to different libraries or playlists. You have a default playlist for your library which is just called default category. You can create different playlists. For example, if you had a bunch of 
videos that you created on a particular topic and you wanted to link those to Moodle for students to be able to watch a group of videos on a particular topic and you didn't want to link each individual video to Moodle, then you could create a playlist. And so to do that, let me get my controls back. All of your controls when you are the when you're an owner of your library are over here on the left and you can go to your library. Uh, nope, organization. I can never remember where they're at. Help me out, Candace. Where's it at? Library. Playlists somewhere. Oh, right there. Playlists. Makes it really easy. All right. And then you click add new playlist and just give it a name. So if we wanted to say, mm, sorry, I'm picking on you, Jen. Drama examples. <laughs> and then you can pick the layout that you want. Um, and pick a, a logo, um, whether or not students can download and then save. So then when you go back to publish that video that you've uploaded or any existing uploads, you're going to have another option. So when I've got this video right here, if I go to publish, I'm going to have a different library or a different um, playlist that I can publish it to. So I could publish it to both or I could publish it to this other library. Okay, does that make sense? Anybody confused about that? Okay. All right. Um, one other thing that is helpful um, that I know some of you have used um, is to create a Dropbox. Um, and that's helpful for students to be able to upload. So you don't have to add every single student um, to be able to have contributor access to your library, which is something we have to do on the back end, but it allows them to easily upload projects to, the, to your library for you to be able to review for um, like an assignment or something. So again, in your library, if you go to Dropbox and click add and call it um, chemistry project fall and then you can it's going to automatically put in I'm pointing at the screen like you can see what I'm pointing at. Um, <laughs> it'll automatically give it um, a title here. You can put in a description um, and then you can change the media workflow. If you think they're all gonna use their cell phones, um, you might change this. If you think they're all gonna use Zoom, you know, you might change it to no transcode so that the quality will be better. And then, you can set schedules, you can email, um, all that kind of stuff. Hit save. And then basically um, you just copy this URL and you can post that in Moodle. And when they click on it, they, are, they have to put in the title of their project, their name, email, I think, and then just upload their project and then it'll just pop it right into your library. So pretty easy. And then you can just click on here and see everything that's been submitted, which is nothing at the moment. All right. So now we're gonna go back to our library here and we're gonna walk through how to set up some quizzes. The quizzes are the fun thing. Um, so when you have, when you're a contributor on your library, when you click on the left under administration and under library, you're gonna see, and you all feel free to follow along, please follow along, um, you're gonna see quizzes. If you click on quizzes and you click add, 
First, you're going to be given an option to give the quiz a name. On the right hand side, you get to pick which video you want to put the quiz on. So we're going to choose, and because you all are contributors, you're, you should be able to choose any of the uploaded videos. Um, that's why I said you all didn't have to contribute a video. So if you want to choose any of the videos that are uploaded, I'd like you all to try to do this. Um, choose one of these videos. If it's yours, great. If it's someone else's, that's fine. Um, hit select. Um, I guess you have to put in the name first. So uh, let's say uh, quiz one. Select the video. You can put some comments in. And then quiz tracking. So user registration. Um, I'm still a little unclear on, on what this means. So I always look at the uh, information here. But I think that's the one that I've always used is user registration. Um, center is what when students log in to Ensemble. Uh, but if it's linked to Moodle, I think either one of those would work. But I just usually leave it as the default as user registration. If you wanted to link an entire playlist, you could link the entire playlist and have them do multiple videos, um, or it would search within that playlist for a specific video. And then you come down here and you look at your quiz settings. Now, I will say if you're used to using Moodle quizzes, this is not even close to it that fancy. This is a very simple rudimentary quiz, but it does allow you to do interactive quizzes, which is going to help you uh, kind of get a sense of whether or not they've actually watched the quiz, um, which is one of the biggest questions is, hey, I'm creating this content for these students to watch uh, remotely, <laughs> hybrid learning. Are they actually watching it? Well, you can test that because you can pop a question up at a certain time points and say, what did I just say? <laughs> you know, um, maybe something a little more elaborate than what did I just say, but, um, you know, answer the question. Um, so you can allow them to review their question, their answers before submission, see their results, show the correct answers, or even allow retakes. Uh, retakes. Um, and then this will actually push it to the grade book, um, but we have to set something on the Moodle side as well. So you can actually push these quiz scores to the Moodle grade book. Um, so you can do last graded attempt, average, or highest grade. And then when it comes to quiz navigation, you can allow them to skip questions um, and I got to do, yeah, okay. So that means they can, they can skip around. Um, they can go back to a certain question that they've already answered. Um, you can allow the questions to be shuffled um, and you can show hints. And then post submission, I'm not even really sure what that is. Uh, this must be new from the new upgrade because I haven't seen this. Call to action button. I'm assuming that means you could send it somewhere else. Like once you finish this, go somewhere else. So then you hit add questions when you've got all that set. You've got your video here. The most annoying part is that you have to listen to yourself talk. So um, if there's words in the video, um, wor words, if there's talking, like if it was a long video, then you have to kind of listen and go to a certain time period. And then you can answer the question. So if we wanted to go to like mm, five seconds, think maybe not maybe you can do that so one second and then we say a question um, and this is not long enough to actually do a question um, of any substance but um, what color is the first box <laughs> I don't know um, orange green and then you select the correct answer you put your hints explanation Okay, different, um, the question types, here's where it's limited. You have multiple choice, true, false, or multiple select. That's your options, that's it, very limited. But it's good for just checking that quick recall, did you watch this? 
do you have quick understanding of what I just showed you? Um, click save. We're just going to do one question. And now we're done. So if we hit play, um, should pop up with a question. Maybe not. Oh, I guess I didn't finish saving it, did I? There it is under the bottom. Yeah, I didn't, I wanted to preview though. This may not be a very good example. It's supposed to pop up in the middle. We're gonna go with it. I thought I could preview it here. All right, questions about what I just did? Hey, Christy. Yes. You might show this, but Caroline had a question about if they don't use the Moodle gradebook, can you still see the results? Yes. So this results button down here, um, whenever you go back to your quizzes, and that's the thing I was gonna show you is, so you can see results in two different places. So you can see in Moodle, you can, and I'll show you once we link it to Moodle, you can only see the overall score in Moodle, but you can see the breakdown of the answers in Ensemble. So when you click on results, you get to see the results by question and the results by user. Um, why do I feel like I did not set this correctly? So yeah, you can see the breakdown of <clears throat> who answered what and what question in Ensemble. And then in Moodle, you can see the overall question. So let's go and jump to Moodle now. All right, I have added you all to the Moodle course as well. So if you log into Moodle, you should see, sorry, I'm trying to get my navigation back here. Hey, Christy. Yes. We had another question. Mm -hmm. um, Michael wanted to know if students can do videos or quizzes on cell phones. We might yes. have to do some testing. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Actually, let me, before we go to Moodle, let me, let me, um, let me show you the one thing I was going to show you. So if you have, um, that's the other thing. If they have an iOS device, there is an ensemble video app. Maybe this is recording. Um, and if you download the ensemble video app, they can add, I think they can, can they record directly from there? Let me see. Yes, they can record directly from that. So let me show you this. This is pretty cool. Oh, hold on. Okay, so it looks like this ensemble video. And it's gonna automatically go to your default library. Um, you can see playlists, drop boxes. Um, then students have this upload button, upper right hand corner, and they can record. So I can record, I'm recording right now. And then I hit stop and it's compressing. And then I hit next give it a title, 
and upload. And it should go directly to my default library. Okay, can they take a video and a quiz on a phone, do you know? If there is so if a faculty member sets up a video with a quiz, if they be able to, I mean, I guess if they logged into Moodle on their phone. Well, let's see here. I have, well, why does it keep doing that? I created one earlier and this is a quiz. No. Just on just on ensemble proper. Yeah, I guess um settings. Michael you want to clarify? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, we've got plenty to work. Yeah, if, it's, if they just go it to the site with Ensemble, I want to make sure they can can use all the stuff and, and take the quizzes. Uh, it'd be better if they don't have to install a uh, <laughs> an app, especially if they have an Android phone. Okay. So let me see here. I've set up a quiz um, somewhere. Where did I put it? I know for some of my websites, the, the students complain because the, the presses don't work the same on the cell phones and we end up having to kind of do two separate, separate things for them. Okay, that's just the video. How do I get to the quiz? Right, okay. You have to link it to Moodle first. That's, that's the deal, I think. I don't think you can take it directly from, I think you take it from Moodle. So let me get back to this once we link it to Moodle. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're going back to Moodle. And then to add the things that you have uploaded from your library, um, it is a, we're going to use the LTI, the external link. So we're going to add an activity and we're going to go to external tool. And then we're going to call it um, whatever video ensemble quiz test. And then from the automatic uh, from the pre-configured tool, we're going to choose Ensemble Video Chooser. And then we're going to hit Select Content. So then you have options to be able to add just a video, a playlist, a Dropbox, or a quiz. So we're going to choose Quiz. And I'm going to navigate to the correct. Library here. Um, all right. Is this complete? Did you create one, Jennifer? Can't hear you, but I guess we're going to use yours. Okay, so we're going to choose. And we're going to save. One important thing when you're adding a quiz is you need to go to, um, no, nope, not there. Under privacy, make sure that you accept grades from the tool. And then you can also set under grade how much you want it to be worth. So if you don't want it to be worth 100 points, if you only want it to be worth 10, make sure you change that there because that's the Moodle gradebook part. So then we're going to hit save. And then if I wanted to test it as a student, it's 
just going to go to ensemble and can you all see the full screen? I can't. I'm going to watch it. We've got plenty to work with. And the question was, what word was repeatedly said during the video? Um, hello. <laughs> Save and continue. Lovely. Okay. Total quiz results, users. I can't see it because I'm doing it as a student. So then if we go back, so I'm going to show you the results here. If we go back here and go to our... I'm doing this the worst possible way. We go to her quiz and go to quiz results. Ah, stop. It probably didn't record it because I was doing it as myself, as an admin. Bad sample, bad sample. <laughs> I can do this. Hold on. Um, quiz. What is happening? I guess it's thinking I already did it. Okay, well, there. I guess I forgot to hit submit. One out of one. Great. Users. Sorry, I'm doing a very bad job here. <clears throat> There we go. So there's my results for the quiz. Got one out of one, and you can view those, the question here and the user. Make sense? Sorry, that was a really long way of doing that. Okay, and then if you look in the actual Moodle course, because we set those settings, then you can look under the grades, and you can look under I'm having a hard time navigating this. Grades. And CTL test got 10 out of 10. That makes sense? Okay. I know that was a really awkward way of doing that. Okay, so then, Michael, you want to know if a student can take this test on a cell phone. So if I go to the Moodle course on my phone. And Christy? Yes. Jen tested it on her Android and said it worked. Okay. So I don't know if anyone else no. tested should it should no, work? I just went I went straight through the link like I just emailed myself the link to the quiz I didn't go through Moodle but it worked fine and it recorded my okay um, response okay good 
so <clears throat> why am I trying to click on that? Um, if I go to Bless you. So yeah, theoretically it would work, but I've already done it as that user. So yes, it works. Cool. All right. Is there anything that I haven't covered? Do you all have any questions? Does this seem cool? Useful? Can you see how this would be beneficial to you and or students? So mainly had a question about yeah. maybe reviewing again how to push the quiz to Moodle. Sure. Yeah. Okay, um, so once you've created, you're, you understand how to create the quiz in Ensemble, right? You're muted. Yeah, I created a, it's called Melee Demo. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so once you create the quiz, then you do everything else from Moodle. Um, I mean, you can just send the link, um, but if you're using your Moodle course, then you just go to whatever Moodle course that you want mm -hmm. to use. Um, and then you, with your editing on. Okay. You add an activity or resource. And you add an external tool. Add a activity or resource. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, so just like topic two, I could just add um, in, that. In, any topic you want, yeah, wherever you want to place it in the quiz in the course, and then external choose tool. external tool, and then add, mm -hmm. and then you just give it a name, so whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then from the pre-configured tool drop down, choose Ensemble Video Chooser, mm -hmm. and then hit Select Content. And then it's going to pop up the screen where you can choose a video, a playlist, a Dropbox, or a quiz. So then you choose quiz. Mm -hmm. And then you select, if you're not in the correct library, you navigate to the correct library. But okay. it, should, it should go to your direct, correct library, because I think it's going to go to your default library. And then you just hit choose and save. And then it's going to embed that in the course. And then you just have a couple other settings to choose. So if mm -hmm. I do this and then save, then you just want to set your gradebook settings. So you go down to privacy, make sure it's accepting grades from the tool, and then mm -hmm. make sure you set the grade that you want to push to the gradebook. And then you just hit save and return to course, and it's ready to go. Okay, thank you. No problem. I just other, put it. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I just put it in your Tech Tuesday Ensemble. If that's okay. You can yeah, yeah, it. absolutely perfect. And I mean, feel free to use this course um, and the Ensemble library to play around with creating courses. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, quizzes and linking them. This course is going to stay here for you all to play with. Um, so if you all have any questions or want to play around. Um, I think I covered everything. Um, one other thing in Ensemble, a couple of people have asked questions about how just generally, if you're not doing a quiz, how do you track how many students are watching your quizzes? Um, so there is um, a reporting feature, if I can get back to,
you click on, let's see here. If you click on one of your videos and you want to know how many people have watched it or what percentage, you can click on this little icon right here that says viewers and you're going to get some data. So from here you can see like, okay, I watched it three times all the way through. You can see I spent five, I'm assuming that's seconds <laughs> on that. Okay, that doesn't tell you a whole lot though. There is another feature um, that I think you all have access to. Um, if you go to, and I don't know, you all have to tell me if you actually see this. If you go under uh, library and reporting. And then you can choose your library and a date and range and a specific title. Um, so if we just chose a random one and you can see total viewed, the duration viewed, the date, the IP address. And then there's also um, different options here. So um, was there something else? I thought there was an option to see what percentage. Whoa, where did I go? Nope, losing pages here. Oh, there it is at the very top. Select a report. So content popularity, but there's also um, content activity, percentage viewed, users viewing details. So if I looked at users viewing details, then I could see, I could look at a specific title and I could see, you know, six total views, uh, total duration. Um, if I looked at percentage viewed, this is the most helpful one, I think. So if I looked at, as, assuming these had titles that actually meant anything to anyone, you could see how many students or what percentage of students looked at 25% of the video, 50% of the video, 75% of the video, or 100% of the video. It doesn't list the names of the students, but it does give you a, a, an idea of how, what percentage of your student population is actually watching the bulk of your video. So, is that helpful? I think that's all I've got. I hope this was helpful for you all. Um, if you have questions, uh, let me know. I will send a couple of follow-up. Um, I'll send an email with a couple of uh, handouts with some uh, procedures for how to do the Ensemble um, plug-in. Um, so you can send that to students if you wanted. Um, and another something that I didn't talk about is how to upload videos to YouTube and, and then download the captions um, if you wanted to do it that way because Ensemble doesn't have built-in captions. Um, but we have a procedure for uploading those to YouTube um, and then downloading just the caption file and then adding that to the YouTube or to the Ensemble video. Um, so I will email you those. Um, but if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to follow up with me. Um, yeah, and I, and I also, I know there was some questions in the chat that we'll look at and address, but on our summer programming page, there is a video that Chris already did about YouTube to Ensemble with closed mm -hmm. captioning. So if you want to watch that, um, but we'll, that's also where we'll have the live recording and some of the other links as well. Great. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Hope, thanks for bearing with me. I'm, you know, as I jump all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting back to it. Hope you all have an awesome day. Thank you, too. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.